Right guys, um, this is a mobile phone video I'm afraid, um, it's not going to be the greatest quality, it's going to be super shaky because I'm going to try and share this with you in one take, um, otherwise somebody's going to accuse me of camera trickery or something. Um, this is hands down the weirdest electrical fault I've ever had in my life. Uh, Triumph 675, a uh, bit of a backstory, guy took all the bodywork off himself because he had a bit of a spill, sent it off to be painted. He's also had the radiator and the downpipes off. Um, I think there was some welding going on on the downpipes. Um, so he took them off and sent them away somewhere. Um, issue is, it's electrically completely dead. Um, so he called me out, he charged the battery up, which might have something to do with this. Um, anyway, electrically dead, came out to it. What happens is, battery's connected, negative, negative, positive, positive, just loosely. As soon as you put a main fuse in, pops a main fuse straight away. Massive short. So, what you can do when you've got a blowing fuse, and this isn't a how-to, but this little doofo has got bulbs connected to it. So rather than it blowing the fuse, it lights the bulbs. That way you can try and find out which component is causing your short. Now, in this instance, when a main fuse is blown like that, the most obvious place to go to straight away is a regulator rectifier, which is what I did. Um, so you disconnect the power from the reg rec, and lights go out. So there's me thinking, perfect, it needs a reg rec on it, jobs are good one. So I left the reg rec unplugged, because um, it doesn't need that for all the electrics to work. Um, put a fuse in, still nothing, completely dead. In fact, the only thing I had was a headlight, high and low. So then I thought, well, it's not responding to the alarm. The alarm's not responding. Um, must be the alarm system. So I have I got to a point where I disconnected the alarm and I was doing some measurements and looking at wiring diagram to find out how to bridge the alarm system. Um, and then I noticed something really strange. Um, so over here I've got my meter. So I was just... I, apologies for the shaky video. It's just going to be this way. You're going to have to bear with it if you're interested in this. Um, so I put the meter on the battery, like that. Notice anything strange? Minus 12 volts. Now I must confess I didn't notice the minus to start with. I only noticed it, I was doing some measurements and getting some continuities between the ECU and the alarm plug and stuff and then I noticed it was minus and thought, well that's weird, that must just be my my meter, some some sort of setting in my meter, so I had a look through the settings, couldn't find anything. So then I went and got myself a little pen cell battery. Um, now, I don't know how this is going to work. Let me rest you up there. So, get the minus, get it the right way around, so that's minus, and that's positive, like so. Wow, so hard with one hand. And then, looks on my meter, no minus. So there's nothing wrong with the meter. So I thought, surely it can't be reverse polarity on the battery. I've never seen that. I didn't even think that was physically possible with a lead acid, lead acid battery. Um, so then what I did, I thought, right, I'll prove my theory. So, I get the battery out. Like that. I might have to put a couple of cuts in this video. If I do, I apologise. I'm going to try and do it in one hitting. So, we've got some test leads here. Um, and I've got a diode on one of them, which you all know will only flow current in one direction. Um, I'm going to use my bulbs and I'm going to connect them to one end. Right, hang on a minute. This probably isn't going to look very great and hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. So I'm going to connect the earth to the earth on my bulbs, like that, and then I've got this diode which I can uh, energise the bulbs with. I'm going to take these ends and I'm going to go over to my 12 volt supply in the back of my van, which is over here in the corner. Now I'm not quite sure I'm going to do this. Uh, so we're going to put positive to positive like that. 
negative to negative, like that. And then I'm going to use this diode and I'm going to touch it in here, he says, and light the bulbs. Uh, swap the diode round. Hang on a minute. Still here, don't go away. So, swap me diode round. Touch it in here. God, this is hard to do. Like the bulbs. Okay. Leave that diode that way round. I'm going to take these and me bulb. And I'm going to go. Whoop. I'm going to go back to my 12 volt battery. I'm going to connect these up to my 12 volt battery. Positive. 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 Negative. 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 I'm going to try and light my bulb. Oh god, he says. Negative. They are the same way round. Nothing. Not a thing. Now then, let me put you up there. I'm going to swap this diode around. Like so. And it works. This battery has reversed its polarity. How bizarre is that? I've never ever seen that. I didn't even know it was possible. And apparently this is the battery it's always run on. So this is a serious mystery. If any of you got any kind of theories or is it possible for maybe this to go completely flat and then be hooked up to a charger, reverse polarity and charge back up? I thought the physical makeup of the battery, i.e. the plate, the, the plates, determine the polarity. Um, anyway, perhaps you've got some comments. I'd really like to um, hear what you guys think. How bizarre.